Hey guys, Terry Red here, and in this video I decided to try doing something a little bit different than I normally do. Uh, given how great the reception is uh, to my preview video for Retro Flare 2, uh, the new table I've been working on, a sequel to ROM's classic future pinball table, but blown out to crazy proportions with epic games and tunes. Uh, basically, I wanted to do kind of like a, a visual behind the scenes, if you will, to kind of show you guys what's going on, you know, with everything you can't see and, and kind of sh visually show or explain how they work. I don't mean like going through code or going through a table editor. I mean like kind of just going through play playing parts of the game and going through the Tron mode and then just showing you, you know, how BAM is working behind the scenes and explaining how things work and all, all, all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, just, just as a neat uh, little uh, behind the scenes tour of how uh, Future Pinball and BAM are working in all the, the, the new things I've had to come up with uh, to, you know, do this stuff and to use the newest BAM features, uh, which there's been so many in the last year and so, yeah. Uh, but before watching this video, uh, I highly recommend that you guys watch my actual preview video that I recently just posted. Uh, watch it from beginning to end and then you can see how the game plays through the Tron mode. You get to see all the uh, extra cool, uh, you know, uh, I guess reveals or big moments. I, I don't want to spoil anything because there's a lot of neat things that will kind of really surprise you that you know you may have never seen in a pinball did in a digital pinball game before uh definitely not in uh you know uh visual pinball or future pinball before not not like this so it's pretty epic so watch that video then come back and then you get the the whole tour of how all this is working so far and uh so yeah so i guess we'll just uh we'll get underway here all right so here we are with the table uh running in a track mode uh when i uh, set out to originally just add uh the tron mode and Super Pac-Man mode to the Retro Flare BAM Edition mod that I did, uh, I realized quickly that I couldn't do what I wanted to within the restrictions of the original table uh, design and code and gameplay. So I uh, basically finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to make a whole new table uh, and do everything I wanted to do and let my imagination go wild. So I kept the, the basic layout and uh, the ghosts, uh, the space invaders in the arcade cabinet, and a lot of the music, but almost everything else has been either replaced or changed or updated or whatever, and it became the, the, the crazy table that you guys are seeing here. Uh, so before I get too much uh, into the table, I want to talk about a couple of key uh, things about lighting with Future Pinball. So you have two types of lighting with Future Pinball. You have dynamic lighting, and then you have the, the normal, uh, just static lights. Uh, so dynamic lighting in Future Pinball are flashers. The flashers in Future Pinball are dynamic lights. All other lights are not dynamic. So what you're seeing on this table right now here, the inserts are not dynamic lights. They're just regular objects with a, a flare of some sort that will light up. Uh, but they won't affect anything around them. Flashers and or, or uh, dynamic lights, if you will, uh, will affect everything around them dynamically. Fully rendered, per pixel, you know, the whole kit and caboodle acting like a normal light really would. So right now you don't see any dynamic lights on except for one. You see a, a, a spotlight. And that's this guy right here. This light is being casted from a hardware flasher light that has been changed to a spotlight. That's a new BAM feature. And to understand, for those who don't know, Future Pinball, the old, is an old program. It hasn't been updated in like 13 years. BAM has added a ton of new features to Future Pinball to allow it to do things it never could do before, to open it up and let us do so many things we could never do before, like control all aspects of the lighting and uh, adding a spotlight type of flasher, dynamic light, is a new feature that I use heavily in this table, and I've used it in a couple other ones as well. So, uh, yeah. And uh, another thing I want to explain is when it comes to uh, flasher lights, you can detach the model from the light source. So this is a flasher, for example. That's the model, but the, the light source comes from that model's location. Whereas this one does not have any model. Like the, the, the flasher light is nothing that you're seeing there. The model for it is actually hidden inside this lockdown bar. 
and then BAM will let you just choose to detach the light source and position it anywhere you want on the table and you can change that at any time uh, in uh, the table script. You can throw it inside a mini play field to move around. There's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, so for example, I, I inserted a coin and then you could see lights came on. None of that is dynamic. Those are all bulbs or just bulb type lights that are within the plastics and uh, you know, but they don't dynamically affect anything around them. Uh, whereas if I hit the start button, well now all the dynamic lights have come on. So I have four dynamic lights for GI. I have two within the plastics down here, one inside here and one inside there. And again, I have their model hidden inside the lock bar. So that way you only see the light source emanating and affecting everything, not uh, a model that I don't want you to see. Uh, and uh, same thing with these two spotlights, they're each casting an actual real spotlight uh, to the left and to the right. So, uh, a couple other things we'll talk about. Uh, so animations, this is a very new thing. Uh, the plastics animation, you've never seen anything like that on uh, Visual Pinball or Future Pinball before. And uh, this is uh, as a result of the new PUP plugin for BAM. The PUP plugin allows you to swap any texture on the table with another texture at any time. So what that means is, if I wanted to change uh, the plastic uh, texture here, I can do that at any time within a command or a game mode change or anything else. And that's what's happening when I enter the Tron mode and change every texture on the table is I'm using that particular plugin. Now we were always able to swap textures before using BAM, but it was limited. You can only do it on certain specific objects because you were choosing an object and then saying swap the texture. Whereas with this method, you're just saying, hey, choose uh, the source texture, replace it with a new texture. And what I did was I came up with some code uh, to basically make it into an animation function. So that way you could do animated effects like what's happening on here. So right now what you're seeing is uh, the texture's changing for each of those things independently 30 times a second. And that's happening for those. It's also happening for the portals here. The center portion is actually a uh, round light bulb uh, model and uh, it has a texture animation going on uh, and then the ring around it is actually a, an overlay but we'll get more into the, describing that uh, so what else are we talking about here uh, inserts so the, I love these things man the way they turned out uh, so this is a, a, a few components going on here so if you see you could it's actually a hole cut out for the insert just like a, a normal cabinet would have so the way that was done is uh, you can uh, you know create any kind of hole in the play field of future pinball uh, using the future pinball model editor and then you just have to choose uh, the mask shape and then what that mask shape will do is once you place this uh, this uh, object on the table it will automatically create the hole there for uh, for that object and in this case all these holes that I added are actually light bulb objects and I, I chose them as light bulb objects so that way I can change them, light them on, uh, turn them on and off, do effects that, like you see in Tron mode. And uh, then that allowed me to separately use insert images that will not be affected by that. So the, the jewels inside are also light bulb objects, but they're just a flat square object. They're, they're not shaped or anything like that. And they're using uh, the image of the jewel that you see here that was made by Shreebi34. He did a gorgeous job on these things. And then what I did is I added bump mapping or normal maps to them. There's a website or tools that you can use to take any picture, change it into a bump map, and then BAM will use that automatically. And you can change all the settings for the for the, the bump maps, like, you know, uh, the specularity, the, the, the bump map level, uh, inversion, whatever, you know, you can change all that. So all these inserts are using that, as well as uh, this one over here, this up here, you know, this guy over here, and all of Future Pinball's light, as you can see, dynamically affects the bump mapping. So it looks really, really nice. It was a lot of work at first, but, you know, it, oh man, like you could combine those two together and then also these decals on top, which is, in this case, I used just one giant image uh, that covers all the inserts. And because of the PUP plugin texture, I can change those decals completely out when I go into Tron mode and uh, or any other mode for that matter. So again, that PUP plugin uh, feature, it comes in very, very, very handy. 
Uh, oh, the flippers. So the flippers, uh, you can see, have uh, what looks like a glow underneath. That's actually just uh, the shadow color. The shadow color can be, that's a new feature. You can change the color of the shadows to anything you want. So for this table, the application is perfect because it looks like it's a glowing effect. Uh, let's see. Uh, the sign over here is actually, uh, an, or I think it's like an ornament. I think it's an ornament. Just like this sign over here, only there's an overlay being used on top of that. And I'll explain more about that uh, later on. And okay, so uh, other things, the portals here. So we have three of them. You have your enter portal, and behind that, there's a ki uh, kicker. So there's a hidden, uh, so the wall behind that is not collidable, so the ball can just pass through. And then there's a hidden kicker inside there. So when it hits that kicker, that causes uh, the portal to close up, and then it'll fire out whichever uh, location you have the portal active. And uh, yeah, and as I explained before, those are two elements being used together. And uh, I'll talk more about how that works when I uh, talk about many play fields. Uh, the ghosts here shake whenever a bumper is hit. The, the bumper uh, images will change up uh, for each table mode. And uh, the space invaders uh, get moved out of the way. And all the art all around gets changed to table room art. Gets changed around. Everything does, except for the cabinet art. That's the only thing, uh, you know, that doesn't change uh, in the middle of the game. <laughs> Uh, so I think that's uh, all the main stuff for this. Uh, oh, actually, there is uh, something else I want to talk about. So, if you go through here, choose your mascot. so you'll notice that now when you choose a mascot, you have uh, ob obviously choices of what you want to choose, right? So let's say you choose uh, the, the nurse. Well, you have a, a, a spotlight being projected from the top down so that way it illuminates really nicely for the character but then you're going to see the the, uh, the platform move down and then the character move up silent hill nurse. and there we go we got a silent hill nurse and so uh, something else i want to show you is uh the texture animation also applies to the ball so with the ball you can see that uh it looks like a lava ball right now and that's acting the same thing as the plastics all i'm doing is changing the ball texture to something else so you have different like fireball uh a, a dragon ball you know ice ball uh plasma ball water ball eyeball electric ball circuit ball you know and fireworks ball like you know lots of lots of neat things on there you know i, th I think i think it looks really cool so that's another neat little feature and the whole idea of the table is that you want to collect all the balls all the tunes uh all the sprites off to the side here that will uh, appear and uh, complete all the games. That, that's the objective for now. That may change. Who knows? Uh, and so you, you can see the Silent Hill nurse uh, dancing up there. So that's something else I need to explain the difference. So Future Pinball, just like Visual Pinball, you can use uh, 3D models for lots of things, whether it's for uh, flashers, uh, the cabinets, the bumpers, flippers, whatever. Uh, but Future Pinball with BAM, BAM has uh, different types of 3D models that you, you can use that are called custom models. There's two reasons for it. One, the custom models are more advanced. Uh, they have way more settings that you can uh, use. As an example here, I'll go right into the options for them. So you can see, so that's the Silent Hill Nurse. So if you, if you want to use a custom model, which can be converted from an FBX or an object into uh, a format that Future Pinball can use. Uh, so BAM has a program that converts uh, the model into a Targa file, and then you just import it into Future Pinball through the texture manager, and then uh, you can use some code uh, to initiate the model, and you go in here and change all the settings in real time. And once you have it positioned where you want it to go, the size you want it to go, because like, you can change the size of it any way you want, <laughs> you know, like obviously you don't want it like that, but you can go uh, a little larger uh, and you can change uh, the, the KD, which is like the brightness of different sections or different layers and the rim and specularity and the bump mapping. If you're using any, you can change the reflection to be on or off. Uh, all this can be changed. And then what you do is when you're happy with it, control C, 
it then creates the new code with all the settings you want and then you go into your script and you do control v and it pastes it in there and then you're good to go and then you can change that up any way anytime you want throughout game events which is what i've done in this one so as you can see the nurse is a little large <laughs> you know but i mean i'm just gonna leave it for now uh so yeah, I think that's all the, the the main basic stuff. But yeah, custom models are are, are a different thing altogether. And uh, you can use a program like a Mixamo with a, a character, uh, or not a program, the website Mixamo, and uh, animate your character. And then you can uh, use a uh, BAM's program to convert that into uh, uh, a model with animations. And then you use uh, script functions to uh, control all the animation and uh, in all sorts of ways. So I think that's all the main stuff there. So now we're going to come to uh, the biggest feature that allows all the stuff, all the magic to happen uh, in BAM uh, on this table, which is the mini play field tool. So I'm going to go right here. And this is the mini play field tool. And it basically allows you to create a capture area in this case you see it as an orange box. So you, you know, the, the, the X size, Y, y size, the Z size, and uh, the center, and anything within that area will then be uh, allowed to be repositioned or scaled or moved or animated, rotated. So as you can see that there's a sign here in the green box. That's the, the destination box here, right? So the idea with a mini play field is you create your uh, orange box, control C to capture the info, you paste that into your script, and then you move it to where you want with uh, the position here. So I'll show you right here. And then control V or control C, and now you can paste that with control V to where you want it to move to. It could be an instant uh, position or it can be done over time for like an animation or you could just change the scaling or you can scale it to zero to hide it. There's all sorts of things you can do. So this is used for a whole lot of things. And now I'm about to show you all the things that are used with it that you can visibly see. And look at that. So now that's all the things that are actually positioned in the table editor uh, that I am using mini play field tool to change or move around. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so you can see we got our nurse over here. This is the actual spot where I've placed uh, the character and the platform that they're on. And the way it works is the mini play field uh, will be used to capture that whole area. Let me just see if I can find there. There you go. So so there you go. You can see anything within that box will then get relocated to where I have it over here. And then it's super easy. You could uh, just adjust it however you want. Down and up. You set your start position, end position, copy and paste. Everything's right here. Very cool stuff. All right, so let's see here. Uh, if there's anything else at the moment I want to talk about. Uh, oh, yeah, the portals. Sure, we'll do that. All right, well, let's, let, we've already got our character uh, selected there, so we'll just let the ball drain. Fatality. All right, so I'm just going to move this up a little bit. All right, so if you take a look at the portals, you can see they're animating, right? But they're not moving. They're not rotating. That is because the mini play field is what actually does that. So if I go back to select one, uh, one of them, all right, let's do that one. So you can see here, the place that gets relocated to is also rotating this entire time. And that's, I, I do that with a, a timer in the table script. So you can see, and then when uh, we switch over to the other one, you know, it's the same idea with that one. And then again, you can control all that dynamically in script. All right, so uh, I think that's all the, the main table stuff that you need to know. Uh, let's, uh, there might be a couple things here. Let's just uh, move on and try to get to a games mode. <laughs> that, that nurse is huge. <laughs> so the, the sprite over here is actually not a target. It's a surface with a transparent uh, targa. 
is, but it still works the same. And then every time you go down a ramp, it changes the sprite to a new one. Uh, and it changes the ball to a, a new one as well. Alright. So, now that the games is highlighted, that means that when you go down the ramp, you're going to get a choice to uh, uh, play one of the epic games. Shall we play a game? And yes, we have the good old uh, War Games reference for the, those of you who are old enough to recognize that. Uh, so, we got a couple things going on here. Uh, we've got an, another portal. This is the Magna Portal. Now, I call it that because there's a, ma a magnet that normally gets activated that will suck the ball into the portal. And it's also, you know, uh, used for uh, entering epic games. Uh, so, that is also another portal that, you know, we, we have controlled with the mini playfield. But the difference is that's actually a three dimensional portal. The other ones were just a flat bulb image. This one is actually a cone with an overlay on top of it. Oh, and that's the other thing I, I wanted to talk about, too. Uh, so uh, the overlay that I used over here for the sign, that's separate from the actual, uh, you know, uh, object behind it, uh, that's what I'm using as well for the rings on the portals. The reason why is because overlays can only be laid flat. Uh, so I needed to use a mini playfield tool to then take the flat overlay and reposition it anywhere I want on the table. And in this case, it's a combined overlay over top of that cone-shaped uh, light bulb object, which also has texture animation going on, uh, the pup plug-in uh, Terry Red method uh, that's being used. So three things combined, and the, the light is turned on for the, the middle section, and it's being rotated, and there's also a magnet turned on, and... In the middle of all that, there's actually an invisible kicker. Now, a kicker is, you know, if your ball falls into it, it can be destroyed or it can be kicked back out. That's what they're used for. So once uh, this portal is activated, the surface just above the portal uh, is made no longer collidable, but it's invisible, so you guys can't see it. A magnet is turned on, so that way when the ball gets sucked towards this uh, portal, it'll then now be accessible to fall into the kicker when it hits the kicker, it would destroy the ball, it would turn off the magnet, and it will uh, collapse uh, the portal down uh, and then carry on whatever else is going on. Uh, so, yeah, something as simple as that. There's a lot going on, guys. Uh, and then, uh, oh, these other things I want to talk about as well. These uh, electrical arcs are just uh, two surfaces that are using animated target images that are transparent. Uh, now... Some people might think, well, uh, maybe you can use a hologram to do the same thing. Well, no, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, holograms are a different thing on Future Pinball that allow you to uh, project animated images. Uh, but the problem with holograms is they render on top of everything on the table. So if that was a hologram being used there, uh, it would be shown over top of the, the wire ramp. So you can't use them in that respect. So another instance where the PUP plugin uh method for texture animation is totally usable and you wouldn't have been able to do that before uh so whereas uh with uh holograms i'll show you the slingshots here have uh holograms being used to give a cool like you know electrical arcing effect i, lo I love that so i just have a hologram between the two of them and it plays uh, a, a, an animation sequence which, which is a normal future pinball uh feature and uh, because it's a hologram, it will take anything that's black in the image, make that transparent automatically, and then the, the arcing portion will be shown. But again, it renders over top of everything. So I, I, I couldn't have it, you know, in a position where things will pass over top of it. So but that, I, I don't know. I think that's cool, though. The, the dynamic lighting uh, for the flasher works. Very, very cool stuff. And you notice that I have the GI turn off for moments where the flashers come on like that it just looks a lot cooler like you know i've seen other like slam tilt do that on his tables and real pinball tables sometimes do that so now that i've gone through all of that we can finally finally go into the tron uh tron game mode and start talking about that so if we go into here so there we go we're talking about epic games now you know so you get to choose between uh, the games here now with the exception of Tron and Super Pac-Man, all the others are like the normal ones I had in the BAM edition. Uh, I plan on trying to update most of them where possible. Uh, but yeah, so if we choose Tron now, you'll, you'll notice the character goes away and the platform comes back up. And then now that the Magna Portal is activated, but the 
overlay image on top has changed to a different texture. So yeah, I'm using the same object, but you know I can change it up for a whole bunch of different things. So now when I go to the center, we're gonna enter the grid. And uh, so there's a couple things that are going on when that happens. And uh, so basically the cabinet, you know, where the glass would be on a real cabinet. What I actually have is I have uh, a couple of things on there. I don't know if it'll show up or not. Let's see here. There it is. So what I actually have is I have, you can't see anything right now because it's showing an invisible image. I have a hologram and I also have a, a giant overlay that is positioned where the glass would be. And that's where the animated effect of changing into the grid is taking place. So I have two things going on there. I have a target image sequence going on so that it looks like it's being uh, you know digitized. And I have a hologram uh, image uh, on top of that for the grid so that you got a couple things going on there so when we go in you take a look and then the magnet pulls it in there holds it and then boom you got the animated sequence and then instantly boom everything is changed over on the blink of an eye and now we're in the grid in Tron mode so at that instant oh my gosh guys the, uh, the amount of things that are changed, the coding, the textures, the mini play fields, woo boy. As you can see, literally the entire table, except for the cabinet art, has been in the back glass, has been completely changed. Every texture, the lights, the, the plastic sides, the, the animated flippers with uh, electrical neon effects, the light insert uh, mesh holes, the walls and the sides are animated. Uh, all the ornament holes for everything are animated. The drop targets are now changed. You know, and we have the different colors on this side compared to that side. Uh, we have different colored bulbs, which I'll get into more about uh, how those work. Uh, the arcade cabinet is a it's a Tron arcade cabinet with a video game in the middle of there, which can be animated by just you know it wasn't a priority to do that right now. Uh, that shows what game's being played. And then we have a recognizer that's hovering up and down. The ghosts have all been changed to Tron characters. So you can see you got uh, Rinsler, Sam, Quora, and uh, Clue. The back wall uh, and the, the DMD uh, video display uh, changes to show you what you need to do. Uh, the, the ramps are using animated uh, pup textures as well. Uh, and the wire ramps are as well. They're also animated, you know, like, so there's an awful lot going on here, guys. The, the, de uh, the decals are all changed now. Like, there's just so much that's going on here. So, uh, one of the things that you can see is, uh, the, the recognizer. So, again, I just use a mini play field to hover him up and down. See, I, I grabbed him from there, and then I'm just moving him up and down. And then there's one other thing that's also, uh, in play there which you may not see but I'll show you uh, where are we here is it yep there it is so th that's that spotlight you see moving back there that's a spotlight flasher and it's actually positioned within this mini play field and I'm using a, a mini play field tool to animate it back and forth left and right super simple you know but very very cool there's no model in there for the flasher the model is actually hidden inside the lockdown bar all right, so again, if you get creative and you understand how the tools work, you can do some really neat stuff. Uh, so uh, the other thing that's set up right now is there's actually uh, a magnet right here. There's also a magnet uh, here as well, used for other uh, features like the magnet portal and that, but there's a magnet in the center here that's ready to go. And then when I hit a certain area, it's gonna turn on that magnet, suck the ball in the center. And then uh, once it hits an invisible uh, switch uh, trigger in the middle, then it'll uh, make the events carry out. So if you watch, this program has gone fixed. Another spray. and then it, then it releases the magnet and carries on again. So as you can see, uh, the inserts are telling you uh, you need to go up the ramps. I kept it simple. Basically hit the ramps or hit targets or avoid targets for most of the gameplay. And then there you go. You get your progression as you go on. So, so I use callouts to let you know that you're progressing uh, on whatever uh, portion of the, uh, the mode you're in. 
and then now you're captured. And there's an invisible kicker in the center there with a cover that opened up and allowed the ball to fall into the kicker and destroy the ball. And then now the, a new ball got created because, again, I have a kicker inside the cabinet and it spits it all out. The beautiful thing is uh, when you know how to swap textures, you can swap to invisible textures. So you could have a solid looking object, but then if you want to kind of hide it, well, then just switch it to an invisible texture and then boom, it's gone. You don't have to move it. You don't have to do anything. As long as it doesn't collide with anything, then it doesn't matter, right? An easy solution. So now you see we have a new character and uh, for all my characters uh, in that location, I always have them uh, appear in the same spot as I showed you before. So let's see here. And ah, I guess I, I was far enough. But yeah, you can see Gem over there in her mini play field. Oh, there it is. Okay. You know, same as before. The only difference is when I swap off characters, what I do is when uh, this whole platform raises beneath so you can't see it, I then will change her character to a scale of zero, stop her animation, and then have the, another character in that same location change their scale to normal, and then I'll start their animation again. All right, so that's Gem there. Uh, yeah, so basically you just keep keep going. And I'm gonna talk about the ball holders here for a second. So again, uh, you also notice that the colors change in the flashers and the, the flipper shadow uh, there to show the progression you're making. So you, will you can see there's a ball holder that traps the ball and we have one on both sides. So there's one there and there's one there, depending on, you know, what ramp you've gone through. And uh, the, the whole idea of that was, you know, I wanted to have events that carry out, whether it's through audio or eventually through video on pup packs. I wanted it so that the ball was held so you don't have to worry about taking your eyes off the play field to see it. Uh, and then that way, you know, you can kind of, uh, you know, enjoy the moments without having to worry about losing your ball all the time. And then... When uh, the, uh, the event is done, then I'll have, uh, well, first of all, this light turns on when that pops up. So that way you know the ball is held. When uh, all three of them are flashing in sequence, that's telling you that the ball is gonna be released. So get ready to catch the ball. And it was a super simple solution to allow, uh, you know, cool events to take place without interrupting, uh, you know, uh, gameplay or making, taking your eye off the ball or anything else. So that, that was a, a, it's a very heavily used uh, idea in this table. If you lose your disc or fail to follow commands, you will be subject to immediate de-resolution. And, and there you go. And then, so now we're going to have the ball go up into the, the portal. Well, that, that, that's not a portal, but in this case, uh, it'll change it into a, a disc. And what's going to happen is the ball will fall into the kicker, destroy it, and then we'll have our new model of a disc that's also animated uh, show up. Now we're going to have a whole bunch of things going on. you got your beacons going off in the left and right. You've got two mini play fields taking out the wire ramps. And then you have two more mini play fields bringing in our Disc Wars arena and our animated characters. And now the, the ball seems to have disappeared and it's been replaced with a disc. So what actually happened is the ball is still actually there. Uh, the difference is I changed it to an invisible texture. And then what BAM lets you do is it lets you attach a mini play field to the ball. And then it'll just follow the ball everywhere. So in this case, I'm using that disc, which is located at this mini play field here. I can't remember which one it is, but actually, yeah, you won't even be able to see it, I don't think. But uh, that, that mini play field has a couple things. It actually has a... Uh, two different disc models, one for the Tron Classic and one for this one, and it has also a flasher there as well. So there's always a, a flasher light source set off while that disc is being used. And I'm also using a texture animation to change the texture of it to make it look like, you know, it's a, 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 a an activated disc. All right. So a couple other things. Uh, you can also see uh, the extra flippers that are used for the Disc War arenas. Uh, that that's just stays above. That I don't use. I didn't use a mini play field to move that around, and I have an invisible uh, barrier 
that the, the ball actually travels around uh, instead of uh, the arena here, which you can see the arena is also very tiny. So, uh, and the character is uh, much, much larger. So that's where uh, the mini play field scaling and rotation, all that comes in handy. So you can see, I changed it to a huge size and then the invisible barriers that are around the flippers uh, are what control where the ball goes instead of uh, the actual uh, arena here. And then uh, the character uh, as well is uh, controlled separately. So when this thing came in and out, oh, not that, uh, it would rotate like this. Back and forth. So same thing again. You choose where it starts. Control C. And then paste that into your script. And then... Oh! Jeez. <laughs> I did the wrong one there. And, and then... You put it back where you want it to go. Control C. Paste that into your script. And then choose uh, the, the time that you want it to do it. You know? Super, super, super simple stuff, guys. And you can, and you can see everything as is. The way it moves. Oh, hold on. There we go. See? And notice that it's separate from the character, right? They have nothing to do with each other. And I did the same thing for the character. So this is a different uh, character location within its own mini play field. So that's kind of like my opponent uh, mini play field. I use that for like uh, when you have to fight someone. Uh, so then that person also gets moved around in the same way. So I just had to make sure that they were both synchronized. The center offsets were exactly the same. You know, it, it was quite a, quite a bit to get the, God, it was a lot of work to get that one to work. <laughs> you know, because I don't, that's the thing with a table like this. I'm doing stuff no one's done before, so I don't have a reference or an example to use. So I had to really try a lot of new things with this, guys. So now, that's another thing. So the character actually has three surfaces or walls around them. One is in the front, which I've already hit, and if you hit it, you'll either get a good hit or it'll they'll reflect it back. So that's a good hit, and then the, the green lights will let you know that. If you uh, hit the back, then you know the arena trim goes yellow, and then that means you haven't got a good hit. And uh, so the idea is that if you get enough good hits in the front, then what will happen is the walls will now become not collidable. It'll allow the disc to pass through, and there's a switch in the center where the character is at. And when that switch gets hit by the ball, then the character will explode and die. So see, in that case, they deflected it. We got a good hit. Now, if I let, let it go down here, there's actually a kicker that would destroy the ball. And then there's another kicker right above, like right where the person's arms are, and it kicks the ball out from there. So there's a lot of invisible kickers, kickers I'm uh, using in this table. And let's just go through her. And if you get enough hits, bye bye. So, so uh, what happened there is you could see it, it passed through the person, hit the switch, and when that happens, then I make the character uh, scale to zero, and then I make a hologram appear in front of them uh, that does that explosion uh, disintegration effect uh, or derezzing effect. And then now the flippers are. Uh, their, their uh, scale is set to zero because I'm not using them anymore. And it falls down to the kicker. And then now we're done Disc Wars. So now we go into light cycle mode, which has a whole bunch of things being moved around. So you got a whole bunch of stuff now happening here. You've got new wire ramps. You've got new uh, funnel uh, ramps by the slings. You've got a character switch out to Tron. You've got uh, you've got uh, two surfaces here. One is a, an actually an overlay, and the other one is a, a surface there for the light cycles uh, portion to be traveling on. Uh, you've got an animation that takes place on a separate smaller smaller uh, smaller cone that rests on top of the ramp. So there's actually two things there. The one is for the image that animates, and the other one is for the actual ramp that the ball will travel on. And again, I used the pup plugin texture to do that animation as well. So if you uh, go back to your uh, mini playfield stuff there, so you can see where everything is coming from, right? There's uh, the tiny little uh, 
you know, two layers there that I just scale up in size. And then we've got our uh, rail uh, wire ramps and our funnels over here. And I, I just move those in and out behind the table like that. Now we got some other stuff going on here with light cycles. So you can see here, the light cycles are going on. Uh, let me just move that out of the way. So there's a couple things going on here. Uh, you've got the light cycle models, which are also using texture animation to make it looks like, look like it's uh, moving. Uh, you have the, the beam behind them. Now there's a few ways that can be done. The, the, the one way, which is the only way you could ever do it in Visual Pinball, uh, but not a good way, is to have a bunch of targets pop up throughout the play field and try to sync it all up. Now, I've done that method before. It doesn't work nicely. It's not seamless, and it, it just is not a great way to do it. Uh, this method, there's two ways, and uh, both will work fine, is you could have multiple uh, like surface uh, objects appear progressively behind and then have their texture change from invisible to the beam color. And that's actually what's happening here. Or you could have one big beam surface and then you could just change the texture, uh, change progressively from one long invisible one to a progressively longer beam. And then what happens is you're also changing the collision for the object as well when the light cycle is going across. And then, bam, Mini Playfield captures all of it in one shot. Oh, I gotta go back more. There we go. So there you go, you can see the Mini Playfield just captures the entire thing and then just moves it randomly, left to right, right to left, on the upper and lower portions, and then it'll uh, make it drop down after it's done. And the collision, this is what's really, really amazing. You can change it so that everything's collidable. So all the physics properties are retained while all the objects in that mini play field is being moved around. That is a huge deal. Like, you know, that, that, that allows for very cool stuff like this to be possible. So if, if I take that off, you can now see how it's uh, making all of that work. And then it all has to be synchronized and timed appropriately. And then you can, if you look underneath, you can barely see, uh, you know, the, the uh, transitions of the image going on there. And then, and as a result of that, uh, everything should be uh, collidable. And then, like the beams, the light cycles, you can't get through them. You have to get around them. Oh, 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 I know why. It's because I was messing with this. That's why. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I forgot because I was messing around with the mini play field, it actually kind of messes up uh, the, the physics. But it, trust me, in normal gameplay, as you saw, it does actually collide and work like normal. Uh, so what else was I going to say about that? Uh, there was something else I couldn't remember, but... Alright, and then you can see here also the light emanating from the disc. Like, how, how sweet does that look, eh? Alright, so when you go into a ramp... So there's gonna be a couple things that ha uh, happen here as well. Uh, the whole time that the, the, the light cycles are moving, there's uh, another hologram mini play field that's following the orange, yellow, and eventually red light cycle the entire time. And then if you uh, hit the ramp, what it will do is it'll then cause it to be destroyed and you'll see an animation effect play out. And then the light cycle will disappear at the same time. And then when it hits the, the lower uh, funnel ramp, uh, then uh, it lights up the animation for the arrows. And then again, if you go up here, same thing. And there you saw all the lights on the outer uh, perimeter there with a, a few hardware flashers mixed in uh, to make a really nice, you know, dynamic fireworks lighting effect, if you will. So for Clue, we got to do him a couple of times. Because uh, he won't uh, get destroyed the first time. 
And therefore, uh, he gets defeated. Not destroyed, but defeated. System and then now you have Rensler coming out. Game on, old friend. And the orange, yellow, and uh, red light cycle is actually the same light cycle model. I just changed up the, the texture colors to a different one. Because that's another thing you can do. You can change uh, the colors of the textures, the brightness. Like, throughout all these uh, game modes and the change-up of the, game, uh, the textures, the brightness for the GI being on and the GI being off is completely always dynamically adjusting. I, I had to change the brightness for everything so that it nicely matches when all GI lights are off and when they all come on. It's all, everything is extremely tuned, <laughs> to say the least. So now you can see. It's the master key, the golden ticket, the way out. So see, they just come on in, and if you look in the back there, they just get changed out. <laughs> but they're always there. And now we're in the, the light jets, which has a bunch of things going on. All right, so here we are in uh, light jet mode now. So, uh, or the light jet battle. So we got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Obviously uh, the, the wire ramps and the funnels got changed out, but now we have uh, multiple things flying around here. And uh, there's a few things going on with this. Uh, so if I go back into the mini play fields. All right, so you can see here, a couple things are happening. You've got this light jet here, which is just stationary, but then you've got the lasers firing out of it, which are actually Future Pinball toy uh, model. So a Future Pinball toy uh, is the one thing that you can move around, rotate uh, anywhere you want on the table. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it's not the same as a mini play field. Like it, it does some things better and other things not so much. Uh, but it's only on its own. It's, it does its animation just by itself. It doesn't, uh, you know, use a, a bounding box or anything like that. You just tell it where to go and it'll go. So the idea here is I used one mini play field for both uh, the light jet and... Oh, hold on a second. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Uh, the light jet and uh, the mini play field. I just gotta find where it's at here. Hold on. I got so many. There we go. So there you can see. So what I did was I captured this entire area and then I, I just move all that as one shot going up and down. And then I have it, you know, change like different animations like for rotating left, rotating right, and that kind of thing. And I did the same thing for, uh, uh, let's see here. There we go, for the, the bomber. Uh, so when it fires back and destroys a jet, then you'll see the same thing where it has its own uh, toy uh, lasers that fire out and uh, then I capture all of that and move it and then uh, we have an individual uh, jet there that you can see his green box he's flying around uh, and then his texture will randomly change sometimes it'll be red sometimes it'll be yellow sometimes it'll be orange depending on the progression uh, of where you're at uh, it, it'll just change it up randomly uh, but when you get further along, then it changes only to uh, Rinsler, and then it's, and then it changes only the clue. So see, you can change, you see it changed up there. So yeah, a whole bunch of stuff going on in there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just yeah, there's just so much, so much going on. So then the idea is that when you hit the ramp, where is he here? When you hit the ramp, then uh, I'll just wait till uh, it lines up. Uh, if the, the jets are in sight, and then it'll do uh, an animation sequence with uh, the explosion going on, and then it makes the other jet disappear with the explosion happening at the same time. And same thing again. And, and you see how the bomber now fires its lasers when you do that. So now that we've progressed, we've got Rinsler only following, because the other uh, guys were taken out. So now, Rinsler is remembering, and uh, so therefore, he's not firing anymore. 
So now if you do one more shot. So now it's only Clue following you and firing at you, trying to take you out. So you have to do one more shot and then Rensler will uh, fly in and uh, take out uh, Clue. So it holds the ball and then lines it up and waits for the event to happen. Fight for the user. And there you go, they're both taken out and now we can uh, progress. All right, so now you can see the spotlight appears and it rises above to make itself look bigger. Uh, the whole mini play field does. And then you have uh, the portal appearing, which means that the ball will get destroyed when it hits the center. The magnet will pull it into the, the exposed kicker. And then uh, uh, the model for the disc, which is in its own uh, separate mini play field, will then rise up. So you go like that. And there you go. But things are not all as they seem. Nothing is all happy. So now you have that uh, overlay and hologram appearing while everything else gets instantly switched over to Tron Classic, which, my goodness, yet again, a crap load of things happened. All the textures are changed. All of them, except for the ramp. Uh, the colors for certain things are changed. Uh, the inserts... Uh, decals are are no longer there. Uh, the plastic sides, you know, the light bulb colors, uh, you know, everything has been changed out. Yori is now appeared. Uh, the Tron ghosts are uh, now different. You can see Sark, Tron, Yori, and uh, Clue. The back wall has changed up to, to tell you what you need to do. And of course, we have Sark in front. Uh, and he's defending, of course, behind him. The MCP, which the MCP uh, is uh, another toy, another future pinball toy that can rotate around. And then the barrier that rotates around him is also another future pinball toy that is constantly rotating around. Now, it doesn't actually prevent anything from colliding. I have a separate surface uh, in the front to act as a gate and another one, a uh, circular one, to prevent the, the ball from being able to hit the MCP. And of course, our, our disc is now the Legacy Classic Tron disc. So see, I can't get in here because that's, that surface, it's invisible, but it's stopping anything from getting in there, right? And then you can see the light emanating from the disc. And then if we hit Sark, just like in Disc Wars, if we hit the front, it's just going to deflect it because we haven't uh, charged our disc, right? If we hit the back, you know, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to roll off. So that's why we have to go up the ramps here to charge our disc. So then if we hit Sark, boom, now you got a good hit, but then you got you to gotta do it again, right? You got to keep attacking Sark. And then you hit him. And if you notice when you go down the ramp that the, the MCP will, actually it'll do it uh, with the slings too. If you hit the slings, the MCP will uh, rotate and follow, like look at where you uh, hit the slings. But then if you hit the ramp, it'll rotate around to kind of look at the side that you're going down the ramp. I'm also better than you. So there you go. So now that we've got enough uh, hits and we have our uh, discharged, now when we hit Sark, just like in Disc Wars, the walls around him are now no longer collidable, which means that it will pass through him and hit the switch that's in the center of uh, his mini play field that will then say that he's dead, and then we'll have the de the de-res de effect, if you will. And then, of course, I have Sarka just collapse down. And then now you can see uh, the insert uh, meshes, you know, are all animating. And then now I'm having Sark's mini play field make him grow hugely large. So... That, that, that's a good example. Like, you know, like I was able to just make him uh, grow with only a, a couple commands in the mini play field. It was literally that. that that's it. I mean, there's more to it than that. But, you know, like you could see that same, same mini play field, same character, same everything. And it just adjusted. That's all it did. So, uh, what do we got here? 
So now that uh, Sark is nice and big, now you have to try to attack the MCP and he'll try to stop you. So if you hit it, it might deflect. It's random. It might hit it, it might deflect. You just keep attacking it until you get the hits. So once you do that, the magnet traps uh, your uh, disc and then Sark attacks and then uh, tosses you back. So you just keep uh, attacking, attacking. You just keep going. And then the magnet's released. So now that I've hit it enough times, now that uh, you've attacked it enough, uh, it wants you to jump into the MCP. It's You can hear Flynn yelling, hey, it's me, Flynn, which means that now you got to go to the left there, the left orbit where uh, that uh, insert is flashing, and that's telling you that you got to go over there. Jump. So now, just like in the movie, Flynn jumps into the MCP and distracts it, and it changes blue. So now that means that he can no longer keep his barrier focused. There's an opening in the front, and now you can throw your disc in there, which will destroy the MCP. Ah! But you gotta get it right in the center, though. There. I, I, I'm sucking. There we go. <laughs> so now, uh, Sark... The mini play field goes small again. We get the nice uh, effect with the lighting. The MCP is spinning like crazy, like a mad fool. And then his animation, of course, changes from blue to white. And then, of course, when it explodes, he disappears instantly. All the characters instantly appear. And then Tron's doing his victory pose, saying, yeah, I'm the best. You know, so... And then you can see the animation, uh, the textures are all uh, changing to blue to show that the grid has now been freed. And just like in the movie when everything goes from red to blue, you know. And you can see now that all the girls are there. But if you look at the mini play fields, you can see where, you know, that they, they were not uh, positioned there from a mini play field. That I just changed their position using uh, the custom model settings. You know, so you don't have to use a mini play field for everything in a custom model. You just can't smoothly move it from one place to another. That kind of thing has to be done with a, a mini play field tool. And if you're using a, a, a future pinball toy, well then, again, you know, you can combine that if you want, like I did with uh, the lasers and the MCP. So, we are at the end now. <laughs> we are finally there. You know, like, uh, I know that was a huge, long video, guys. I mean, there's no way around it. There's just so much to explain, you know. But you can see, uh, you know, the detail of the characters and, you know, how smooth the animation is uh, and everything else going on. So that's it, basically. That's the end of Tron mode. Uh, and that's basically the end of this video. Uh, I, I know it was really long, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it's just a more of a... So you can visually see how this stuff is working because, you know, no one's really been doing anything like this before. So I figured you guys might like to kind of follow along and see how it all works behind the scenes. You know, there's way more to it than I'm showing you right now. The programming and the coding involved is insane. You know, all the artwork that has to be created, the lighting that has to be done, like, you know, and the, the animation for the characters. You know, uh, all of that has to be done. The, the conversion of all the characters, the models converted, like just... So much has to go into this, and there's going to be more to come. There's going to be at least one more Epic Games mode I'm hoping to add. The only limitation I really have is uh, Future Pinball's RAM uh, that it can address. It's a 32-bit application, which means the table can only get so big before it can't address any more RAM, and then it'll start crashing. So there is a limit to what I can do. Uh, so I'm hoping to get at least one more Epic Games mode in, and then we'll go from there and see how things go. So i uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, keep an eye out for future review uh, reveals or major updates in regards to this table. Uh, you know, it's still a long ways off from release, but, you know, uh, whatever time I can muster up, I, I try to get as much done. Uh, but I can't wait to have it done so that you guys can eventually be able to play this, you know. Uh, so I guess I'll see you in whatever next video I'm making. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.